is London, the capital of Britain and one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. It's also host to a melting pot of people and cultures which has transformed the city over the last half century. But at Westminster, there's a growing call to put this melting pot on the back burner, or better yet, to turn the stove off. The reason Britain's generous system of social and health benefits is at a breaking point. What we can do is make sure that those who come here from the EU or from further afield do so for the right reasons. That they come here because they want to contribute to our country, not because they're drawn by the attractiveness of our benefit system or by the opportunity to use our public services. Cameron has vowed to reduce immigration which had mushroomed under his Labour predecessors. But like its EU counterparts, Britain worries it will face a new wave of immigrants, those coming from Romania and Bulgaria, when next January, restrictions on freedom of movement will be lifted. Unable to stop what is a fundamental EU right, the government was said to have come up with a new approach, a negative campaign to discourage immigrants from coming here. And of course, the media have had a field day. From Britain's bad weather to inequalities and long queues at customs, the message is this. We can't stop you from coming, but Great Britain is just not as great as you think. British humor aside, many warn the problem is serious. Opinion polls reveal that some 70% of British people would like to see a reduction in immigration. We're not suggesting that this is all about saying, no, don't come. What we are saying, though, is that the government, the authorities, actually have some inkling of the sort of number, the numbers that are going to come and to, to prepare for it in the way that they didn't in 2004, when we were told that there would be 13,000 a year coming from uh, the eight countries that joined the European Union. In fact, it ended up being something closer to a million. And that's really, that has consequences. What about schools? What about housing? What about transport? This is a dance class in Boston, Lincolnshire, about a two-hour drive north of London. The class is organized by the local Lithuanian community. Not exactly Baltic music, but a sign that these young dancers are tuned into integration. And for the teacher and one of her students, they say they're contributing and not taking. I have a baby and uh, I have a husband and uh, uh, I'm working in factories, so now I'm teaching the children, so it's really good for me and uh, I'm happy. I'm not living from uh, benefits or <laughs> from e English money. <laughs> There are like different kinds of people, like I mean, like um, the teacher said, some people steal, and but I'm not here for that, I'm here for like, for my future. Coming to Boston in search of a better future, this is what thousands from Eastern Europe did after joining the EU in 2004. They came legally to work in farms and factories and this small city saw its migrant population increase tenfold in less than a decade. An increase that has many locals concerned, a concern which translated itself into a vote for UKIP in this month's local elections. UKIP has long been viewed as a far-right, on-the-edge political party with only one goal, to get Britain out of the EU. But today, it's Britain's third biggest party. UKIP's stance, it's not about race, it's, a, it's totally a space issue and we're a small country and we cannot cope, we must unlimited immigration. UKIP wants to put just a straightforward border control on the country with a visa system like Australia, Canada, America, so if we need doctors, surgeons, hairdressers, plumbers, we can get them from all over the world. But what we don't need is mass unlimited EU migration, unskilled labour force. When we've got British people, we've got over a million youth unemployed in the UK that are destined for a lifetime of unemployment, and these are people who want to get doing the jobs. For some locals here, voting for UKIP means sending a message to Cameron that he can no longer ignore. 
I've been conservative all my life, you know. Uh, I'm an ex-forces, just retired, 40 years in the army, a Thatcherite through and through. Uh, but, you know, they just don't represent what we want anymore. You know, they've gone way off the, way off the mark, you know, uh, especially the, the issue on Europe. You know, we, we don't really want to be a part of that. You know, happy to trade in and out of Europe, but all that money we spend on a daily basis, I don't have figures, but I know it's a lot of money. You know, we need to put that back into our own country. So I voted for UKIP. Saying no to Europe, saying no to immigration, but especially listening to those who feel they've lost control of their country. This is Nigel Farage, member of the European Parliament and head of UKIP. For him, Britain's EU membership is part of the immigration problem. Clearly, some people that have come from Poland have worked hard and paid taxes and obeyed the law, and that's great. Um, but we have London now in the grip of a Romanian crime wave. Uh, we have, as I've said already, excessive uh, youth unemployment. We have the wages of average workers being driven down, in many cases, to uh, the level of the minimum wage. Um, why would we want another 100,000? Or 200,000? Or 300,000? Or half a million? Or a million? Or, I mean, this, is, this is the point. We have no control over how many people might come. Getting back control from Brussels, or at least some of it. Cameron has argued he will do that before a 2017 EU referendum. But with Eurosceptics warning a new wave of EU immigrants could land on British shores, some worry Cameron's political hands are tied. For the first time, you're really getting a kind of merger of a Eurosceptic argument, which has been going on in fairly abstract constitutional terms, and a very salient immigration argument, which is about first Poles, Lithuanians, now Romanians, Bulgarians, sort of coming, swamping the labour market as they perceive it. So that, what the Conservatives are very worried about is that when the transitional controls are lifted and Romanian, Bulgarian workers are entitled to come here in January, then there will be a whole load of negative headlines in the sort of populist and the right-wing press and this will kick off and you'll have another surge of, of angry UKIP support uh, in hostility to, to migration from Eastern Europe. Richard Leggett is a third-generation farmer and a member of the Boston Council for 22 years. He says the real culprit for the strain on Boston's benefit system and driving wages down is not EU immigrants but supermarkets which want good and cheap products delivered fast. Those jobs are open to everyone. I employ some immigrant labour and all I do is ring up a gang labour supplier and he will send me who he has on his books. I believe once I had his mother-in-law, uh, but there are indigenous um, workers on his books. I've had them, I've spoken to them here. So it's up to the people to go and get enlisted. If they want a job, go and enlist where, where the demand is. While Eurosceptics claim closing the gate on EU immigration will help the British economy, others argue the real key to national prosperity lies within and not outside of Europe.